Hello everyone and welcome back to ITVersity channel and this is Raghu. So as part of the roadmap to become a data engineer in 2025 series, let's discuss about the AI and ML skills required for data engineer. See, a data engineer is no more, I mean, no longer somebody who just moves the data through pipelines. He is somebody who is able to manage intelligent systems. And as all of you are aware, there are a lot of advancements in the area of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And without addressing them and having an awareness about them, it is very difficult to survive as a data engineer, I should say. So let me pick some of the uh, most important skills with respect to ML and AI that a data engineer should know in 2025. Let's dive in. The first skill that I probably would like to think about is designing uh, pipelines with respect to AI and ML. See, traditionally, if you look at ETL, this has been more or less towards structured data and semi-structured data. But today, if you look at systems, you might need real-time streaming data to train your machine learning models. You might need images, videos, multi-model data, right? Even vector embeddings. So. As a data engineer, when you think about designing pipelines, you have to consider multi-model data and how it can be effective with respect to AI and ML. So the whole definition of a pipeline has changed over the years, right? Now you are no longer looking at a pipeline where a dashboard pops up in, in front of a, your manager, but you are, you are rather looking at the pipeline as uh, an intelligent mechanism which will feed your ML AI models, which can do predictions and whatnot, right? So the definition of pipelines and how they have to be constructed has to be different and thought about if you are a AI, if you're a, if you're a data engineer who has AI ML uh, skills. Next, ML ops mastery. See, a data engineer in the modern world is somebody who is like a bridge between a data scientist and production. So you should be able to automate pipelines, starting from training the model, running the pipelines, monitoring the metrics. So think about tools like MLflow, which can help you to automate these tasks. So that is where ML Ops comes into picture. So you may not be somebody who will be actually writing the code and probably, you know, building a machine learning model, but this entire process has to be automated and you have to be familiar with the tools with respect to that. And if you really ask me like, why does it matter? Then companies typically lose millions of dollars when a model fails in production. So your ability to deploy, maintain, and iterate through this process and automate this process will keep you apart from a traditional data engineer with just SQL skills and some dashboard skills. Have you heard about tools like Tectone and Feast? You should better. I mean, these are the tools which can automate feature engineering. So gone are those olden days when you manually pick up a feature and then extract it and train your model. Now in the modern day, you don't want that. You have to use tools like Tekton to automate the feature engineering flow. Uh, you need to generate, uh, I mean, you need to design systems which will automatically generate features, validate these features, and serve it to the ML models. And if you're wondering why this actually matters, then talk to an ML engineer and he will say that 80% of the time people are spending on feature engineering rather than building a model. You automate feature engineering and that will save hours, days, or even months of work for you. And you will stand apart as a data engineer with super skills. And here is a superhero skill that you can start learning right away, vector databases. As artificial intelligence is accelerating towards large language models, you know, LLMs and all, uh, we tend to represent data such as images and videos in the form of vectors. You have tools like Pinecorn and Milverse, which help you to store and retrieve data in the form of vector embeddings. These are nothing but binary data, but having an understanding of vector databases Vector search is really important for a data engineer. Now, why does this really matter? Vector search is the backbone of tools like ChatGPT. Now, if you do not understand this, if you do not incorporate this uh, into your daily workflow or your job, then you will miss hugely on the generative AI revolution and you don't want to do that, right? Next is data quality. 
Now, this is not general data quality that we are talking about. This is with respect to model specific data quality, skew in training data, etc. So in the older days, when you talk about data quality, you typically think about, okay, exploratory data analytics, and then that's it, right? But now we are talking specifically about data quality with respect to AI systems. Training, serving, skew, bias detection, these are some of the things that you would like to monitor. And if you're talking about tools with specific to this uh, area, then you have great expectations, you have Monte Carlo, this should be in your toolkit. Why does this matter? Proactive data quality is non-negotiable. A skewed data can cause a lot of problems, especially in the AI era. So that's it. So these are some of the things that I thought about the specific AI ML related skills. Now, now this list is not complete and also not comprehensive. So my suggestion would be stick to ML ops, vector databases, data quality, and overall designing the pipeline, keeping AI and Gen AI in your mind, then you should be good to go. So this is Raku signing off. And in case if you are watching this video from our channel for the very first time, then consider subscribing to our channel, uh, like the video, share it with your friends, and do let us know what are the other videos you want us to come up with. So as a data engineer, probably you will be expecting tech videos or skills videos, roadmap videos. Do let us know in the comments and watch this space because we release videos on a very regular basis and we come up with some of the top notch tech content. So click on the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever we have a new video. And I'll this is signing, Red signing off. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.